Hello, everybody. How are you today? Welcome, welcome, welcome to my World Card Making Day video here on Scrapbooking Cards Today YouTube channel. I am live. I'm different. I'm the oddball of the bunch today. Everybody else had their pre-recorded videos that they did such a wonderful job. I've been enjoying them all morning, but I'm here live. So you guys can chat with me during this if you want to. Um, not in the chat. I can't type because I'm going to be actually making a card with you guys today. So hello, everybody. I've been watching the comments come in. Um, I think I may have accidentally typed something as scrapbooking cards today. I'm sorry if I did that, but I was saying I'm making my first card of the day today so far on this video today. Hi, everybody. So good to see you all. I hope everyone found me over on the live tab rather than the regular video tab of the um, scrapbooking cards today site on YouTube, because I guess if you're here, you found me, but um, and welcome if you're watching later on replay as well. So I am so excited. So I'm going to be doing um, some fun mixed media type of things, which I know is maybe outside of the comfort zone of some of you who are watching. But I saw somebody earlier, I think it was upstairs, what, upstairs hobby room, <laughs> um, said she's going to stretch herself. And so I'm going to have you guys do a little stretching today, perhaps. I know some of you, you love this and it's totally your jam. So hi, everybody. So I'm going to be using Hero Arts Mediums today. And when Megan um, was talking about getting everything together for today, she said to you to do your favorite technique. And so one of my favorite things to do, my favorite technique is just adding a lot of texture to my cards. So my cards are lumpy bumpy. They are not flat. They are not one layer. They are not clean and simple. I like to put a lot of stuff on my cards and use all the things like texture paste and embossing powder and waxes and all the things. So we're going to do a lot of different things today. And so without any further ado, I better jump into it so I don't keep you all the way until the next video, which I think is in two hours. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I won't come anywhere near keeping you that long. But let me go ahead and switch to my overhead camera and we'll get going. And I am so, I'm assuming everyone is hearing and seeing me okay. Um, but let me get my mouse out of the way since I sometimes accidentally move it back and forth. All right, so what I'm gonna start with on my card, I think you saw a kind of sneak of what my card looks like on the video cover that um, Megan put together. And now I'm doing mixed media type of techniques. And so I will say that you don't always get 100% the same thing every time you do it. That's part of the fun of it to explore and see what happens. So today's card may end up looking a little bit different, we'll see, but I'm just gonna be doing the exact same things I did and we'll just see how it all comes together. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create my color base on my watercolor cardstock panel. This is the Hero Arts watercolor paper. It's a very smooth watercolor paper. And I love using this for most of my mixed media. It's a, a nice thick cardstock, so it can take a lot of um, water and mediums and different things on it. So that's gonna be my base. And I'm gonna begin by doing a little bit of watercoloring. So I picked three of the Hero Arts liquid watercolor colors orange, dandelion, and strawberry, just to have some reds and yellows and oranges for my fall themed card. I do have some watercolor in here from when I made my original card that is dry and I could just spritz that and, and reactivate it and use it, but I feel like just putting some new in. I don't know, I'm just gonna do it. And I just love that our liquid watercolors have this cute little eyedropper on them to get the, the paint out. And so again, if you if you have this and you wanted to just reactivate and spritz it with some water, you totally can do that with this watercolor. But I'm just adding more. All right. So for my card, I'm going to kind of do what I did if you were in my Crap and Crate Delivered class. Um, I'm not going to tape it down this time, even though I probably should. It would make it a little less warpy. I just um, I just like to I don't know. I like to just wing it and go for it. And so I'm going to, oh, I have a little yellow left in my brush from before. That's okay. I'm starting by just wet, wetting the entire background of my panel just to give it some water to start with to move. And this is not any kind of fancy water coloring that is hard to achieve. I'm just putting some water down and then I'm going to drop some color on and we're going to end up with this background. Now I am kind of trying to not have perfectly straight edges on this. I want it to be kind of, um, you know, free form looking. Hi, Brianne. Hi, friend. I'm not ink blending today, so I don't have my ink stand out. All right. And I'm going to start with um, my lightest color, which is my yellow, and just take some and blop it in here. And this is actually very, very similar to my card that I had in the class the other day at the event, but 
different medium of watercolor, but same basic idea. And I'm just going to move in between my colors. Now I'm adding some orange in there. And so that that water that I put down to begin with helps that water, the watercolor move. See how that blooming just happened? I love when that happens. That is so pretty. And I um it it also keeps like kind of the border around the edge so it doesn't go beyond where I want it. All right, and then I'm gonna go in with some of the red, just a little bit of red here. Blend the colors together and see what I get. Watercolors are totally my jam. I love them so much. So here's where we're at right now. It almost looks tie-dye at this point. <laughs> Look at all that fun bloom and everything going on on there. So pretty. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my heat tool and dry it. And then I'm going to go back with more color just to help build up my colors and blend and make it just a, a beautiful background. But hopefully you can see, I, I didn't put a whole lot of thought into that. I was just kind of putting color here and there and everywhere just to make that fun background look. Hi, Britta. Hi, friend. Let's all say, Britta, you need to make more cards. <laughs> She's coming back to the card making after not doing as much lately. And I love it. I love it. Love it. Yeah, the soft edges, it's really easy to do if you start out with your water with your paintbrush and just make that edge and that's where your paint will stop. When you're watercoloring, one thing to always keep in mind is that the paint will go where you have water. So if you don't have water, it's gonna be a lot less likely to move into that area unless you force, forcibly put it there. So when you start with um, a water edge like that, it really helps. So now I'm just going in again. I'm not sure the, the extra yellow will show, but we'll see. And go back in with some more of the orange and that's really vibrant so i want to maybe make that a little bit less less crazy but i'm going to be covering up a lot of this background so i'm not super worried about exactly how it's looking now you will say see i blobbed a little bit over here on the side let me see I'll lift it up so you can see that's where it kind of paint dripped off of there so I'm, one thing you can do another thing you can do with watercolor is just take a paper towel and dab what you don't want. That's another thing I love about it. It makes it very forgiving. Actually, I can even tap in here where I thought it was maybe a little too dark of orange and take some away. So you, you're not stuck with it if it's not what you love. And I'm sorry that I have to hold up my paper. Um, I should, I, I think I'm gonna start streaming in a different way that I can actually zoom because I think that would be much better, but I don't have the zoom. I have to do the physical zoom with my hands. <laughs> Um, yes, and Megan, or I think it's Megan as SCT, just mentioned that the, the products I'm using are all listed on the Scrapbooking Cards Today blog. Um, they're updating it throughout the day every time there's a new video um, with what the artist who is doing the video used. So, all right, I think I'm going to call that good on this one. It's really pretty. I love all the colors. I hope they're coming across as how beautiful they are. I'm going to give it another quick little dry, and then we'll move into using some paste. And so this was just my way of putting some color down. In the beginning, you could have ink blended your background if that's what you prefer. You don't have to use the watercolors, but I just love the look of it. And you could also use the same general idea of making a background like this with different color combos. Like after seeing Mindy's video with that beautiful purple and blue butterfly, I mean, it makes me wanna get some purples and blues out and do the same kind of background on a card. Oh my goodness, I just saw the comment about um, die cutting this with some leaf dyes. That would be absolutely beautiful. And I hope it's showing on the camera as, as beautiful. It's, it looks a little dark on my screen, but hopefully you guys are seeing how beautiful and vibrant those colors are. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna get all the painting things out of the way and move on to the stencil. Not the, yeah, the stencil and the hero paste. So another way that I love to add, this isn't really texture, but it's my first base, obviously. Um, another thing I like to add on my cards is Hero Paste. Hero Arts has um, this texture paste, embossing paste, whatever you want to call it, in different colors and types. I'm using the plain one today, the white. There's also a gold, which I could have used on this card and got a similar look, but I wanted to show you some other cool things today. There's also a pearl and a sparkle. And so when I have my, my canister of it, I do put a little bit of press and seal over the top just to help keep it from drying out. 
Um, there is a, a lifespan of these. You don't want to try to keep them forever and ever. I mean, I do want to try, but <laughs> you want to use them up because they're not going to last forever. They are a medium that um, does not last forever because it can, the more, the longer it's open, the more moisture it's going to bring in is what I'm trying to say. And I'm glad to see that I'm speaking Brianne's love language right now. Yes, I love it too. Um, the nice thing about the white is not only can you use it like I'm using it today, you can put a little bit of this out on your, um, oops, just got my finger, on your craft mat or an acrylic block or whatever you like to work on and put in a little color in it as well. You could smush down an ink pad and then put your paste on it and mix it together for color. You could put some reinker in it or you could even do the liquid watercolors that I just used to add a little color to this paste and make it any color you need to match your project. But today I'm just leaving it as white. And the way I like to do my stencils, there's different ways you could do pixie spray, which I don't usually use very often, but it is, it is a great product. And there's also the make art station, which has magnets, but I just take some tape and put it on the back of my card face up to the stencil. So it holds the stencil, but when I take the tape off, it's not going to rip my panel on the front where I care about it. All right. And so now I need my palette knife, which seems to have walked off. I found it. <laughs> it was in another bin because we have a, an event going on at Hero and I was using it as a different thing the other day. Anyway, um, so I'm just going to get a little bit of this on my palette knife. This is a nice, nice tool from Hero Arts. It's nice and sturdy. It's metal and wood and, you know, will last a long time, which I love. And I am just going to push this through my stencil. Now on this, I'm not worrying about covering every square inch of my panel. I kind of like it to be here and there, but not everywhere. <laughs> um, just to kind of freeform it a little bit. Now, one thing when you're using paste like this, they dry relatively quickly. Not, not instantly or anything, but relatively quick, quickly. And when they dry on your stencils and um, palette knives and whatnot, it, it can be hard to get off if it's already dried. So when you're using this, you either wanna have a bath of water ready to go to just put it down into, or you can do what I'm gonna do right now and just get my baby wipes and clean it up real quick. And I'll show you what I just did in, in a second. I just want to make sure I get my stencil clean because I love this stencil. Um, I think this is called uh, Leaves and Swirls Stencil, I believe. It was from our um, September release just last month. And it is linked again on the on the Scrapbooking Cards Today blog. But isn't that a pretty one? So, so great for fall. Okay, calling that good. Clean up this. Like I'm a pretty messy crafter <laughs> and I don't always clean up after myself. But the one thing that I do make sure and clean up after myself is when I use pastes like this because I don't want them to, to ruin my stencil or anything else. All right. So what we have now, you get this tape off the back. It looks great. I like the white. It's fun, right? But what I'm going to do now is take it up a little notch. And you could do this with any kind of embossing powder. I'm gonna put embossing powder on my paste and then melt it that way. Um, in what ways could you add color to the paste? I, I mentioned that just a second ago, but you could do um, you could do reinker, you could do an ink pad smushed down onto a piece of paper and then mix together with that um, palette knife. You could use the liquid watercolors. You don't wanna to add too much liquid to it because it could totally change the consistency of it, but you just wanna add a little bit of, of liquid and then um, go from there. So. Start with a little instead of trying to take away if you have too much. All right, so what I'm using now, this is our iridescent gold embossing powder. And actually, let me show you. This is what it looks like when you just normally emboss it. It's a really shiny gold and you can kind of see how it changes in the light because it's iridescent. And this is what it looks like on black. It's a real, it's a yellow gold, but really pretty. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle that right on this panel and emboss it. All right. Now, one thing that was 
I didn't, I didn't realize what happened on my first card, but then I loved it. So I hope it happens again. Is it also kind of stuck to my um, uh, watercolor because it wasn't 100% dry and it looks so pretty. So I'm hoping it'll do that again. And I'll show you what I mean if it does. And I could have taken my fingers and kind of sprinkled it on a little instead of doing it like that, but it worked. So you can see there's some down in there. Just wait until I change this with the, the heat and then you'll really, really love it. This is a good opportunity to use my cute little, let me find it. <laughs> this is from Brutus Monroe and I just love it. It's so pretty. It's like this unicorn tail or I, I can't remember what they call it, but it's just a little brush and I use it to clean powder off my desk onto my floor. Cause you know, that's where you put powder, right? Is onto your floor. <laughs> Maybe not. All right. So when I heat this, um, I am not going to worry about bubbling my embossing paste because I love that. That's that's what I'm going for. I want it to be bubbled because that adds more texture and makes me happy. All right. So it's going to be loud for a minute again as I get my gun out. My tool. I don't know if we should call it a gun. It sounds kind of violent. <laughs> I'm just heating it up before I put it to my project. Going to the back side first. Try to hold it up so you can see. So you're going to really see it boil. You see that, guys? This is not a mistake. I want this texture. I want this bubbling to happen. Okay, so if the paste dried first, then heated, the embossing powder would bubble. Um, I'm not sure because I'm not sure your embossing powder would have stuck if it was already if it was already um, dry. You know, I used that wet powder, wet paste to hold my powder. But do you see the texture that that added? And you could do this with any embossing powder. And I just think it's cool. <laughs> And then can you also see how that iridescent powder stuck to the background watercolor as well? So I have this incredible iridescent glow when I move it in different angles. And that is making me so happy too. It's just like all over shine. I really hope it's coming through on the camera. So this is probably not completely dried all the way through, even though I did cook it pretty good. <laughs> um, I, I do want to back up and say that's one thing I love about this paste is that you can heat it. It's okay. You're, you you could burn it if you really put your heat gun to it for a while, but it can burn, it can bubble and get cool texture without actually burning and smoking and getting gross. You know what I'm saying? So that's cool. I love it like this, but I'm going to show you another fun thing that you can do to add another little layer of something on here. And I'm, I'm doing gold on gold, which you don't 100% see, but if you, so picture for a minute with me here that you did this with um, like a white embossing powder on your white paste and have that bubbly texture. And then you go in with um, this wax, which is what I'm going to next. This is the hero wax. And you could rub that on and you would have like gold on your, on your bumps of your wax. I'm doing the same thing. It's just going to be all that. It's going to be gold on gold. So I think you'll see, I can see it in person. Hopefully you can see it. So I'm just taking a little bit of this wax. 
on my finger and see what it's like. And this is just another great thing for adding texture and, and interest on your card. So I'm adding it on the leaves. Can you see how much, how that looks a little bit different now with that gold on there? And it just kind of helps set it apart from the iridescence in the background as well. And it goes into that texture and just adds some, some yummy goodness. Um, let me show you real quick, actually. I think I, yeah, I have my art journal here. I'm just going to pull up something and show you real quick that I did it as a demo a while back. If I can find it real quick. Like here, this is some, um, like an iridescent kind of um, embossing I had on there. So then when I went in with the gold, you can see how it, it just added it to the background and into those raised pieces. And so this is what I like to use this kind of gold for. That on my finger got a little dry. See that? I just want you to see it on something that isn't gold on gold. So you can really see what I'm talking about. All right. So I'm going to go in on more of my leaves and add this little bit of extra gold to one end of each leaf. I guess you could call this gold leafing. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> and we do have the waxes in other colors as well. There's black, there's white, there's a red, there's a green. Uh, I think that's all of them. Another thing you can do with, and this wax dries really fast. Like, as I mentioned a minute ago, as I was showing you that, it kind of dried on my finger too much that I couldn't um, use it anymore. And so it is something you don't want to keep sitting out uncovered for too long. I'm just showing you on the edges here how you can also kind of, you know, add it to your, your edges of your card if you wanted to, to add a little bit of gold something on there. All right. Yeah, I love, I love mixed media. <laughs> it's my jam. It's my favorite. I'm sorry I'm missing kind of some of your comments because I'm, I'm staring down at what I'm doing here. But if, if you do have a question for me, it, you know, if you feel like putting the word question, that does help me see it maybe. Or ask again if I missed it. But anyway, I'm just showing you different ways to add that. I'm going to clean off my finger, move on to the next thing. And I'm going to set this aside for a little bit, but then I am going to trim it down a little bit um, to fit on the final card that I'm making. But I want to show you another medium and use it in a, a way you may not realize that you can use it. But again, let's just look at how beautiful this is. Oh, so pretty. All right. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some um, <laughs> bee leaf. Bump, bump. Um, hero wax. So this is the hero wax in cork. And this is not hero wax. Oh, my goodness, brain. Hero pearls in cork. This is like a little pearl. Um, I'm just mixing it up real good, shaking it up. This is something that you could add like dots and lines and different things to your projects, you know, make a little dot with it. You could make a little line with it, whatever you might want to make on your project. And we have this in gold, but I'm like, I have so much gold going on here. I'm going to change it just slightly to set it off a little. But what I'm going to do instead of um, doing this, which I could do, I'm going to do something a little different. Um, does the paste dry and potentially crack in the mail? I don't think it would crack in the mail. I um, guess I don't know for sure, but I've never had that happen so far that I've heard of. If somebody got a card from me that was cracked, they didn't tell me, <laughs> I guess. Um, okay, so I put a blob of it here on my panel. I'm taking my palette knife and I'm just gonna spread this out. And why are you doing this, you might ask? Well, once this is dry, that is something that I can then die cut and get some different things out of. And so what I did, let me get my little wipe and clean this and then I'll show you what I did. This one I need to let dry for a little bit. I took it right off the screen, sorry. <clears throat> I let it dry and then I got out my messages here. This is called Grateful Words Fancy Dye. I got my label wet, so look what happened. <laughs> Um, and this is a great set for the, the Thanksgiving time or whenever you need to add a, um, 
you know, send a thank you card. It has grateful, gratitude, blessed, gather, and thankful. So really great messages for the season. And it has the word die. And then it also has the little shadow that you can cut to make a shadow around it if you choose to. And so I use that grateful die and I actually took it from my dried panel of pearl and cut out the word. So even like a little fragile word like that, you can cut it out once you put that pearl down and let it dry. Um, I don't seal this. I don't seal that. It doesn't come off once it's, it's all kind of the, the wax dries on there good. And then the, um, the embossing is embossed. So there's nothing that you need to seal. All right. I saw somebody mention a sponge. I'm not sure what Mindy's doing with the sponge, but <laughs> okay. So that's what I did for this. I just took that panel that I just spread out the wax and then cut out my word. And even though it's not like perfectly smooth and perfect, it, I think it looks great on the, on the message. You know, my one that I cut out was kind of the, the same. So just a different way to use your pearls than the, the standard making dots with them. Okay. All right, so then I did go ahead and cut this a couple more times. And I will say that I am not as good at lining up these little words as somebody like Mindy, especially when I can't even see where my glue is. Where's my little bottle of glue? Hold on a second. It had fallen down. <laughs> um, so this is, this is actually... Hero Arts glue in a Gina K bottle, but you could put Gina K glue in a Gina K bottle, obviously. And I'm just gonna get it going. Yep, it's good. And try to, I should have done this ahead of time because I'm not very good at it. And you don't need to see me not be good at this, but that's okay. I'm just putting little dots along here. And all I'm doing, I cut this out of white a couple times just to um, build up my message and make it thicker is all I'm doing here. So I'm sure you've seen other people do today, I think. But this is such a fragile little word. I find it to be slightly different, difficult to line up. But, but, tweezers, so oh, I should probably do tweezers. That's the Mindy tool of choice. <clears throat> um, mine was not, I'm going to pull out my final card in a second. And it is not lined up perfectly, but I like it because it leaves that little bit of white shadow to make it really kind of set off a little from my panel that I'm putting it on. So I actually decided that I'm not worried if it's not perfectly lined up because it looks good. But you see what I'm trying to do here? Line up all the words, all the letters, I mean. Okay, and then I put something heavy on it for a second. I have my new great big share handmade kindness thingy. Yeah, I have not mastered the using of the tweezers. I really need to, <laughs> especially because... As uh, Tim Holtz would say, my pork chop hands don't don't really help much. Okay, dot dot dot. You don't need to have this glue every single place because it's really strong and it'll hold it. Dot dot. Okay. Oops, <laughs> stuck to it. Go. Sorry, I'm focusing. I get quiet. <laughs> all right, lining it all up here. Okay. There we go. That worked. That worked well. Tweezers are a lifesaver. Okay. Okay. I need to try my tweezers. Hero makes great tweezers too. We have the reverse grip. Super, super nice that they could hold things for me. But instead I, you know, almost come close to burning my fingers when I'm doing the heat tool and I don't use it on my little die cuts. <laughs> dot, dot, not a lot. That's right. That's um, Stephanie Bernard, right? <laughs> that's her thing. Love it. Okay. So while that's setting a little bit. The other thing I added to this card is my um, foliage and flowers fancy dyes, which somebody had mentioned that dye cutting the watercolor with leaves, like this would be a good leaf to cut out with that. Either of these would be pretty. Um, but I use this one right here, this little two leaf, um, you know, dye. <laughs> and I already cut it from some glitter paper. Although I love this one too. Isn't that cute? I just love the round little leaves on that. 
but I'm gonna use that one. And I'm using our gold glitter paper from Hero Arts. And what I'm gonna do is trim down my panel. Let's look at this. I don't feel anything tacky or anything else. So I think it is just fine to cut it down now, put it in my in my um, trimmer and cut it down because I do want to, you know, layer it up a little is why I'm, why I'm trimming it. I may come in with a little more wax on the edges. We'll see. Three and three quarters. And then this end, I'm going to get down to five because I'm kind of going in two layers with this. My, I'm off the thing. Sorry, guys. So three and three quarters by five is what I'm doing this panel. And then I have a piece of vellum that I'm going to put across with my message. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this again and put it on the vellum. <laughs> it didn't hurt me though. It was fine. I cut that piece without any problems. Um, yeah, the compact cutter is perfect for these little messages and leaves. It fits in there. That's the Hero Arts little die cutting machine, if you guys aren't aware. Thanks for the plug, Mindy. <laughs> and then I'm going to put my little leaf coming. Um, I did it flat, yes. Just kind of next to that message. Coming in right in here, kind of. Well, Kathy, I'm glad I'm interesting. I would hate to be boring to watch. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna put this down with gold. I'm gonna put a layer of our gold glitter cardstock. Now a little tip, I'm wasting all this center part that I'm gonna cut, you know, I'm gonna cover up. I could have cut my leaves right out of that center before I put it down, which would have been a great way to conserve um, beautiful gold glitter cardstock and not waste it, right? <laughs> that I just thought of that. I'm just putting some glue on here. I know Mindy said earlier she doesn't like to put a lot of glue on a big panel. <laughs> I guess I, I don't mind. <laughs> Plus, I don't know where my tape runner is right now. All right. So this is just a top folding card base that I'm putting it on. I don't think I listed this for Megan, but um, we do sell them in a pack of 10 if you wanted to buy them already made so you don't have to cut your cardstock and fold it and do all that stuff. Um, but that is obviously easy to do as well. I am going to put this down on my panel. I will say when I made this, I was like, I was like it's a little painful to have to cover up some of my pretty because I loved it. <laughs> and if you haven't done vellum like this now, uh, before I should say, um, I like to just go where the message is. That's why I glued it on the vellum first because you don't want the glue to see th uh, show through your vellum. And so I'm just kind of tracing where the word is on the other side to hide my vellum, to hide my vellum, no, to hide my glue. You know what I'm saying? But I will put just a little bit over here too because it probably won't show and just helps it stay down. <laughs> I am real, Joanne. Joanne, yeah. Joan, Joanne. Do you say it, Joanne? Probably, huh? Okay. I'm going to put this down on here just to let it glue a little bit. I'm going to pop up that final layer. And then this is what my original card looked like. All the same, pretty much. It turned out, you know, I mentioned at the beginning that I wasn't sure if it would come out quite the same because when you're doing these mixed media techniques, sometimes it, it turns out a little different, but I would say it's pretty spot on. It's pretty much the same. So that is my card today. Um, I will finish this one. I don't want to, I don't want to leave you guys hanging. I'll go ahead and put the foam on here and finish this one as well. I'll show you a little tip I like to do with foam. I, I don't have a roll of, of foam tape right now. I need to get one because that would be better for a card like this. This big panel is to have a, a strips of it that I could put on there, but I'm, I'm out. 
So I'm putting my awesome foam squares from Scrapbook Adhesives by 3L. Putting kind of a lot of them because I want to make sure that it doesn't sag in the center. And I'm, what I like to do when I'm using foam like this, especially on a rough paper like glitter cardstock, where I want to make sure that the, the stickiness of the foam will stick to the glitter because it's not like a smooth surface that you're adhering it to, I put a little liquid glue on the back of my foam squares. And it also gives it a little bit of give, you know, a little wiggle room, if you will, so that if you're crooked, you can scoot it a little. But I just like, especially when I'm putting it on something like glitter paper, I just want to make sure that it's going to adhere really well. So I put that liquid glue. And there we go. Yeah, I think they're very similar. <laughs> All right, guys. So that is it. I think you guys were already saying nice comments to me. Thank you. As I was finishing that up, I will go ahead and go back to my, my face. So that was my card. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again to um, Scrapbooking Cards today for having me be part of their day today, which is so great. And thanks for letting me go live because it turns out I'm better at going live than I am at doing pre-recorded videos. So I am going to, I want to, it's a goal of mine. I'm going to get good at that. I'm going to have a YouTube channel. Fun fact, I actually have a YouTube channel. It has like 100 subscribers and I haven't posted on it in a decade. <laughs> but someday maybe I will actually use that YouTube channel. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining today. And I'm looking forward. I think, May, is it Megan is next? I think maybe at 3.30 Eastern time. And Kelly's coming up today too. So just a great day of inspiration. And enjoy it. Have fun. Make some cards today. And hopefully I will see you sometime again soon. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.